Welcome to our new video review, this time about a Pulsar Core FXQ50. It's a thermal clip-on device, so it's a, a really exciting device for 2017. It was first shown at Chacho 2017 and then later at EVA. It generated quite a stir in the industry because this is one of the first thermal clip-ons which have a really affordable price tag. Uh, devices like this were available before but they were always really really expensive and not really affordable or well their price was above the limit which most of the hunters can reach. But with this one Pulsar did a fantastic job uh, it provided a great device for a, for a price point of around 4,000 euros which is almost astonishing for a thermal clip-on device. This is a successor of an uh, F, uh, FXD50 core um, so it features a better sensor but everything else, the whole idea of the device stayed the same basic idea is that you can use this product either as a monocolor, so you can just watch it, the surroundings through it and see everything what is warm or cold or that you can put it on a daytime optics, daytime scope, in most cases on a daytime rifle scope and so you are converting with this device your normal optical rifle scope, you are converting it back to, well not back, I'm back to uh, thermal rifle scope. Uh, because this device doesn't feature any reticle or anything si similar, this is um, allowed in most European countries to be used, while dedicated thermal rifle scopes are not allowed in majority of the members of the EU. So this particular model has a 50 millimeter objective lens, there were four different devices presented from this core family uh, FXQ50, FXQ38, a little bit smaller, only the front lens is smaller and then FXQ35 uh, and FXQ55 The difference is that uh, the 35 and 55 are basically the same devices with a 50mm or 38mm lens but this part which is meant for the um, connecting to a rifle scope is permanently attached on them. Um, so the device is a little bit different but the whole setting is almost the same. As you can see all the cores are really compact, really light, it weighs only 400 grams so compared to all traditional night vision attachments this is a really light device. Uh, it also has an uh, IPX7 waterproofing, so rain is no problem, water in general is no problem. They work from minus 25 to plus 50, so they're really uh, a high quality product, which is you can use it in any kind of conditions you can imagine. Uh, it has a 4.1 magnification if you have this eyepiece set and if you use it as a monocular, if you use it as a clip on like this. I'll show you. If you use it like a clip-on, like this, then it has a one-point magnification and then you can use it normally on a daytime scope. Now when the whole system is set up for a daytime scope you need additional adapter for the rifle scope this bayonet here it's the same like on their uh, previously well-known digital forward attachments like on the, the DFA uh, 75 or DN 55 so this is the same adapters can be used either the original from made by, by Pulsar or made by Rusan or similar um, adapters can be used so that you connect them to a rifle scope. Uh, well in this setting it has a one-time 
magnification. This device is powered by two CR CR one two three A batteries. It also uh, has an um, a special um, uh, accessory which enables you that it's powered by a, an outer source of energy, similarly like their uh, like pulsar helions or pulsar quantums, the uh, thermoscopes. But also on the batteries itself, it runs for four hours and maybe even a little bit more. So we tested it extensively and we never ran into problems of uh, that it would drain the batteries fast. So in this regard, it's quite a well-designed device. What is also a nice feature is that the the this cap for the compartment for the batteries is on a on a small string so you can never lose it it's very smart a small addition but it makes the device work much better um, every core comes with a well the f uh, xq50 comes with a small attachment for the monocular use it comes with a with a remote control which you can connect the device to so it's easier to control it with a manual in a couple of different languages as you can see here so in different languages and with a warranty of three years so and the service will be provided for much longer than three years and Pulsar made a smart move they opened an fully new facility in Lithuania. These devices are now made in Lithuania and uh, they also have a service uh, there in Lithuania so they're quite well taken care of if something happens. Uh, the device has around five second cold start which is uh, a little bit longer than their quantum series but nothing drastic. What is Maybe a small nuisance is that uh, you are not able to see anywhere externally if you turned on the device or not on this button. So you have to look through it to see if it's turned on or not. Uh, when it's used as a monocular, like this, like this. Oh. I have to put it on the right way, I apologize. Then, ah, like this, uh, then you have two settings on the external part of the, of the housing of the device. You have a focus for the target here on the front ring. So you're able to focus all the way from five meters to infinity. And then you have a diopter setting here. So here you adjust the clearness of the display inside and here you adjust the focus of the front lens. Uh, if we talk a little bit about the optical performance of the core, it has uh, the same sensor like Quantum's did with uh, 17 micrometers um, pixels and with a 384 by 288 uh, pixel sensor. The display has a pixel count of uh, 640 by 480 and the field of view is 7.5 meters per 100 meters. The detection range is around 1800 meters which is really a lot. Even when you put it on a, on a daytime scope it is uh, you see the animals on, uh, on the distances which is which are unimaginable and unimaginable for any other clip-on which has a conventional night vision technology even 2 plus generation or, or generation 3 it works totally different the thermals are just amazing on how far you can see and detect the animals the display is green you can choose two settings either that the warm objects are bright uh, or that they are dark uh, it doesn't have any color palettes like the Helions and in general it has a lot less settings in menus and a lot less um, available choices 
compared to helions or um, or quantums. Uh, but still, the resolution is quite good, and even the detection, it's uh, it's so good that you actually are able to see the trophies or the horns on more than 100 meters. And as you probably know, the trophies are usually not as warm as the rest of the body. So this is quite an achievement. So it is possible to judge what you're looking with this device because the, the sensors in thermal devices are getting better and better. So the resolution and the amount of detail you're able to see is also getting better and better. Uh, the scopes, when you connect the scope to the device, um, the optimal magnification is around 3, but in my experience at least you can go all the way up to 6 or 7 and you still get a more or less usable picture. So I would say in this regard the sensor is quite big enough even if you use it at 6 time magnification and 6 time is more than enough for anything. Uh, as you can see the core has four buttons on the top of the housing. This is an on-off button. Then you have left and right buttons for toggling in the menus and then you have a menu button, this one which is the nearest to the, to the user. Uh, with one small press you enter uh, the first menu which only gives you the possibility to adjust the brightness and contrast. You can also reach these values if you go directly, if you press either of the left or right uh, buttons from the start with a short press. You immediately change the last setting which you had from either the brightness or the contrast. Of course if you want to toggle between brightness and contrast you have to short, pre short press the, the menu button. Uh, if you however uh, press the left button for two seconds you change the mode from uh, well the color from uh, uh, black hot or white hot. If you press the right button for two seconds you get a digital two-time magnification. That means you go from 4.1 if you're using it as a as a monocolor you go to 8.2. In, in, in an attachment mode when you have it on your daytime scope then this uh, digital magnification isn't uh, really a good idea. So if you press the menu button for a little bit longer, for two seconds, you enter the main menu. In the main menu you have uh, settings like um, uh, you have a horizontal align, so when you put it on a on a daytime scope you can always turn it around and you never know when exactly you are horizontal. So this is the first option which you have is that you're able you get a line inside of the of the screen and you're able to horizontally to align the device. Then the the second one is that you can change modes either from forest mode to city mode or detection mode. This is a little bit. Uh, this mode gives you a little bit of different. Um, well, the display changes a little bit, and you see a little bit differently what you're looking. It depends in what kind of environment you're using the core, which mode is the best to choose. Then you have the calibration. Like with all thermal devices, you can choose either automatic, semi-automatic, or manual. In general, most of the people just prefer automatic. That means that every couple of seconds, every 30 seconds or maybe every minute the device freezes a little bit for one second and then it recalibrates so that you always have the optimal performance. Uh, then you have time in the menu and um, uh, remote pairing and dead pixel repair. This is the last function. Dead pixel repair is quite a good function if something, if, if you find a dead pixel in, on the sensor you can just uh, repair it in this menu. Um, and then you have one additional option when you put it on your daytime scope with an, uh, if you press the left button and the menu button at the same time you enter a special menu for zeroing the device. You can 
uh, adjust a little bit the zero point, the point of impact for the bullets and you correct this only once and then the setting is saved. Usually it's uh, you don't need to do it, uh, but sometimes it happens that you shoot and the point of impact changes a little bit so you can adjust this here. It is smart that on the first use you try it and you see it how, how it works and that you zero it also. Um, <clears throat> in the menus I have to also say that what is really funny is that menus are vertical. We will do a separate video about the menus, but uh, the buttons to the to change different options in the menus are left and right. So this is a little bit counterintuitive. Intu so you, you have to go left to go down and you have to go right to go up. This I think could be done a little bit better. It's not a bit big thing, but it is a little bit funny. So if I make a short summary, this device is almost like a must have device because it's a really affordable thermal clip-on attachment. This is something that is really special at the moment. There is no other device on the market which would offer similar performance and similar functionality at the, let's say, the same or similar price point. All other similar devices are at least two times more expensive. Uh, the second thing what I think is also we need to say is that the build quality the uh, compactness and lightness of this device is it's really really good that uh, it is also waterproofed this is just additional bonus and that it works from minus 25 to plus 50 it's also um, I would say a big bonus um, I also think that battery life is not that bad this was my biggest fear when I first got this device um, but we tested it now quite a lot and battery life is not a problem at all. Uh, what I think could still have been done better. I think that an external indicator uh, if the device is turned on or off would be a really good idea. Uh, I think that if this bayonet here would be made from metal would also be a good idea. Well. Uh, or to be exact this part on the monocular this one already is from metal but still I think this could be could have been done a little bit more sturdier a little bit more robust but it's not a big complaint um, I think that the buttons could have been placed a little bit differently so that you could go in the options up and down uh, with the buttons uh, which would also be directed up and up and down and this is about it what I find it could have been done better in general it's a great device and almost a must-have device thank you for watching please subscribe to our channel like our channel and visit our webpage